What's up guys, Lon here from Android Authority and the Nexus 5 was arguably one of the most popular Nexus phones ever made and it was made by LG, a company that quickly became a fan favorite as a Nexus manufacturer. Here we are two years later with the highly anticipated and somewhat unexpected sequel, but is this the Nexus 5 successor that we've all been waiting for? This is the Nexus 5X. The design of the Nexus 5X continues where the Nexus 5 left off, but this year it's more of a mid-ranger and not really a flagship, at least not when you compare it to the higher end Nexus 6P. The 5X is made completely of plastic and feels extremely lightweight in the hand, weighing in at a little over 130 grams. It's very sturdily built, so I don't wanna necessarily say that it feels cheap, but it doesn't have that same luxurious or quote unquote premium feel of a phone made of metal or glass. And if you're coming from a phone made of those kind of materials, it can be a little jarring at first to go back to a phone with a plastic build. It's still a really attractive looking phone with the rounded corners and slightly tapered back, and the plastic is coated in a matte finish which helps a lot with the grip and prevents the phone from collecting fingerprints. Because it has a smaller 5.2 inch screen over the more massive screens of other smartphones currently on the market, it's also a lot easier to hold and use in one hand. Like the last few Nexus devices, there's a Nexus logo written in landscape on the backside, but this time around instead of being embossed or made of separate pieces, it's just simply painted on, probably to avoid any fiasco with letters falling off. There's also a slight camera bulge on the back, but unlike a lot of other phones that we've seen this year with protruding camera lenses, the 5X's is a lot more subtle due to how the back panel tapers upwards to meet the lens. On the right side of the phone is the power and volume buttons, and they're very easy to press, but the feedback is a little bit mushy and they lack that satisfying click. On the left side, there's not too much going on with the exception of the nano SIM card slot, and along the top is a microphone, but otherwise it's also pretty bare. In true Nexus fashion, there's a bright LED notification light cleverly hidden in the front speaker grille, and finally on the bottom is a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a USB type C port, making the 5X one of the few smartphones phones on the market to adopt this new standard. Now, because USB Type-C is still so new, it's gonna be a while before it becomes a convenience rather than an inconvenience. And I love the reversible nature of USB Type-C, don't get me wrong, uh, but because it's USB Type-C on both ends of the cable, it's gonna be a hassle for both charging and data transfer unless you own other devices that are USB Type-C. Uh, unlike the Nexus 6P, the 5X doesn't come with a USB Type-C to USB standard in the box. So if you need that extra cable, which I assume many of you will, you're gonna have to shell out some extra cash to get it. The 5.2 inch screen on the 5X is still an LCD like it was on the Nexus 5, except it's a slightly larger panel and the resolution remains the same at 1080p. Even though it's not quad HD, I don't find myself missing that extra resolution as the screen is still plenty sharp, the viewing angles are pretty good, and it has some really great looking colors without appearing overly saturated. The biggest downfall is the screen's outdoor visibility. It's manageable if you crank up the brightness all the way, but it definitely isn't the easiest screen to see in direct sunlight. Just like the LG Mate G4, the Nexus 5X is being powered by a Snapdragon 808, but there's only two gigs of RAM, and in 2015, that number sounds a little skimpy, but I've had zero issues with performance on this device. It plays games well, it multitasks well, and is overall generally very fast in everyday use, and it obviously doesn't hurt that it's running pure vanilla Android with absolutely no bloatware. It'll be interesting to see how well the 5X holds up over the next year or two, but as of right now, it seems to be able to hold its own just fine. The most notable piece of hardware on the 5X is the fingerprint sensor, which is a first for this year's crop of Nexus phones, and a lot of that has to do with Marshmallow's built-in fingerprint support, which Google is calling Nexus Imprint. It's conveniently located on the backside where your index finger naturally rests, so it's very easy to find, and using it to unlock the phone is actually very fast. It's not instantaneous or anything, but fast enough that you'll pretty much never see your lock screen, and the setup process is also extremely fast. It takes anywhere between four to five taps to register a finger print, but despite how short and quick the setup process is, it's surprisingly very accurate and I've yet to have it misread my fingerprint once. The 5X comes in either 16 or 32 gigabytes of storage, and just like previous Nexus devices, there's no expandable storage, so spring for the 32 gigabyte if you can, and trust me, you'll be a lot happier that you did. There's a single front-facing speaker located on the bottom chin of the 5X. It's pretty decent for what it is, but the sound is a little on the flat side. I would have liked for there to be two of them, but I'll still take this setup over any bottom-mounted or rear-firing speaker. And because it's on the front, you won't run into any issues with accidentally muffling it with your hand. 
The 2700 milliamp hour battery inside lets the 5X go for a full day with average use, but I wouldn't expect too much more than that. And if you're heavily gaming on it, you can easily kill it before the day's over, which I managed to do a couple of times. Marshmallow's new battery saving feature called Doze does however work very efficiently, putting the phone in a very deep sleep and limiting unnecessary app activity. This will cause notifications to be delayed unless they're deemed as high priority, but the device will periodically wake up to sync them. It's a small price to pay for better battery life, but I think it's a trade-off that most people will be perfectly okay with. The 5X doesn't come with wireless charging like the last couple of Nexus phones, but it does support fast charging through its USB Type-C port, and in my experience, I can go from zero to 100% in roughly 90 minutes, making it extremely easy to fill up or top off anytime during the day. The bane of pretty much every Nexus phone in existence has always been the camera, but Google is looking to change that this year. There's a new 12.3 megapixel Sony sensor with a pixel size of 1.55 microns, f2.0 aperture, and laser autofocus. Unfortunately, there's no optical image stabilization, but Google is promising that it doesn't need it in order to take great pictures due to the larger pixels, but it still wouldn't have hurt to have it, especially for recording video, which turns out pretty shaky even from casually walking down a street. This new sensor also allows for the 5X to record slow motion video at 120 frames, and the slow motion video is a lot of fun to play with. The slow motion is very silky smooth, and Google's photo editing app lets you select exactly which parts you want to slow down versus the whole entire clip. The camera can be easily launched with a quick double tap of the power button, which is very convenient, and once you're in, you're greeted with Google's new camera app. In true Google fashion, the camera app is still pretty bare bones, but it's still an improvement over previous versions. You you can swipe left or right to toggle between video or stills, and the HDR toggle is located right on the viewfinder where it's easy to locate instead of being buried in a submenu or the camera settings like other camera apps tend to do. With the 5X, we finally have a camera on a Nexus phone that's capable of taking some excellent photos. They're sharp, full of detail with just the right amount of saturation to make the images pop. And most importantly, it has great dynamic range. The overall camera experience is very fast too with a quick shutter speed and fast focusing thanks to that laser guided autofocus. The low light and nighttime shots are good, but I don't think they're quite as good as Google might have hyped them up to be. Looking at the images as a whole, there's still a very respectable amount of detail, but you can definitely notice some heavy noise reductions in the dark parts of the images. Another thing that I noticed is that if you have HDR auto enabled, every shot that you take in low light is guaranteed to be processed as an HDR image, and this is a good and a bad thing at the same time. The photos are definitely a lot cleaner with punchier colors and obviously increased dynamic range, but the processing typically makes the images overly yellow and it just doesn't look natural or as color accurate as the non-HDR version of the same shot. So you have to weigh out the pros and cons and figure out if you'd rather deal with the excess noise or have more accurate color reproduction. Where Nexus devices have always led the Android pack is in the software. The Nexus 5X is running Android 6.0 Marshmallow out of the box, and if you want the most pure and clean Android experience possible, Nexus is the only way to go. Aesthetically, you won't notice too many differences from Lollipop to Marshmallow, but Marshmallow does introduce a lot of neat under the hood improvements like Doze, which we've already talked about, and some other very nice enhancements on the surface level. The first thing you'll notice is the brand new app drawer, which has been switched back to a vertical scrolling list instead of the horizontal paginated view from before. There's a search bar at the top to help you quickly search for an app, or you can scroll through by grabbing the scroll bar with a letter indicator to let you know exactly where you are within the list. App permissions also got completely revamped. In previous versions of Android, app permissions were granted upon installation and you couldn't pick and choose which permissions to allow or deny. It was pretty much all or nothing and this created a lot of concern, but with Marshmallow, permissions are only granted when the app needs it and you can pick and choose which apps get permissions to what within the settings. Now on tap is the most highlighted feature in this latest version of Android and this more or less brings the power of Google Now to any application that you're in. It's contextually aware, which basically means it analyzes the screen and offers up suggested applications and information based on what it thinks you're looking for. And although I haven't had very many instances where I needed to use it in a real world scenario thus far, I do like what it's capable of doing and should only get better as Google makes improvements. I do however miss the swipe ups to get directly into Google Now, and you can still do this by long pressing on the home button and tapping on the G logo, but it isn't quite as quick as before. The Nexus 5X is available now for a starting price of $379 and comes in black, 
white, and a mint bluish color, or as Google likes to call them, carbon, quartz, and ice. 379 is a very cheap price tag for what is a very solid Nexus phone, but with phones like the OnePlus 2 and Moto X Pure Edition hovering around the same price point, the 5X isn't the best bang for your buck smartphone. It is, however, a great smartphone, and if you've been waiting two long years to upgrade from your Nexus 5, the very much improved camera and the latest version of Android make the Nexus 5X completely worth the upgrade. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up down below. We definitely appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel, which is also down below if you haven't already. And feel free to check out the rest of our content that's linked over here on the side. And check out our website as well for more in-depth coverage, androidauthority.com, because we are your source for all things Android.